Hello, my name is Sid Single, and for my final project for Sixes, I wanted to see what would happen if we were to apply the Fourier transform to different images. What kind of patterns would we see in the um, in the Fourier transforms, and how can we modify the Fourier transform to modify the original image? So, just a little bit of background before we get started. We already know how to use Fourier transform. However, the Fourier transform deals with continuous and infinite functions. The digital images we want to transform are going to be of finite length and have discrete pixel values. We also want to visualize our Fourier transforms so we can analyze them. So the output must also be discrete and finite. Because of this, we have to use a discrete Fourier transform. For each of the n output pixels, we essentially sample n evenly spaced frequencies from 0 to 2 pi and then use the summation formula seen here. This will allow us to use a discrete and finite input and give, a, give to us a discrete and finite output. How does DFT work in two dimensions? The equation seen here might seem confusing, but it's actually pretty simple. Suppose you have an image. You would first independently replace each row with this Fourier transform, and then replace each column with this Fourier transform, and then you're done. Before we get to the good stuff, I want to share some pre-analysis I did with the Fourier transform. I first tried seeing what would happen if we put two dimensional sine waves through the Fourier transform. In the case where the sine waves are either vertical or horizontal, we see a corresponding vertical or horizontal line of specs in the Fourier transform. For example, in the case where we have horizontal sine waves, we see a horizontal line of specs. This means that our image is a linear combination of many horizontal sine waves. Because the picture is constant going up and down, we won't see specs anywhere else. In the case where we have a diagonal sine wave, we need sinusoids in both the vertical and the horizontal directions in order to get that rotation. We can observe evenly spaced out specs in our Fourier transform here. I also wanted to see what would happen if we were to apply the transform to a couple of simple polygons. You can see that for a line, we get the following transform. Even though the picture of the line may seem simple, the Fourier transform still has a lot going on with many different vertical streaks. Notice that as we start to form polygons and add sides, we start getting streaks down the center of our image. We might observe a pattern where the number of streaks in the middle is the same as the number of sides in our polygon. We see three streaks for a triangle and five streaks for the pentagon. However, for the square, we only see two streaks. This is because each streak in the middle represents lines going in a certain direction. Therefore, if we use a different quadrilateral with no parallel edges, we will observe the expected four streaks. Let's look at a couple of filters that we can apply to the transforms to modify the original image. On our screen is a low-pass filter, where we only allow small frequencies. Because we are cutting out the higher harmonics, we are losing the details of the image and the image starts to blur. Notice that as we decrease the radius of the filter, the image starts to blur more. We also notice a ringing effect in the image, that the higher harmonics would have balanced out had they been there. We can also apply a high pass filter and only allow higher frequencies. This process can be very useful for edge detection. Notice that in the modified image, we can see where the edges of the flowers are and where the pixel values drastically change. As we increase this radius, the edges become thinner and thinner. A bandpass filter is a combination of a low-pass filter and a high-pass filter, where we only allow pixels within a certain range of radii. We can see that the effects are combined as well. We notice the high-pass filter's edge detection feature. We can also see the blurring effects of the low-pass filter taking place, as well as the ringing effect. One interesting test I wanted to try was line filtering. If we were to add evenly spaced vertical and horizontal lines across the flower image, then we noticed a grid of specs in the Fourier transform. I tried to draw lines over all of these specs just to see what would happen. The lines do not completely get removed because it is hard for the program to guess what is supposed to be behind those lines. However, we can see that the, that the lines do try to blend in as best as they can. In some, of, in some areas, like near the top right corner, the blending works pretty well. So far, we have tried to take an image, find its Fourier transform, apply a filter to the transform, and use the inverse Fourier transform to get a modified version, version of the original image. 
However, we can also use convolution to get the same final image. Suppose we try to use a convolution kernel that tries to blur the image. If you use the Fourier transform of the kernel as a filter for the Fourier transform of the original image, we will return back to the exact same modified image after doing an inverse Fourier transform. Also note that the transform of the kernel looks very close to the low-pass filters that we saw above, which is what we expect since we want to blur the image. This is an example of the convolution theorem. On the screen is a link to my GitHub page, which includes all the code I wrote for this project. Please refer to my paper to see examples of how to use the code. Thank you for watching my presentation.